Inside this video right here, I'm gonna show you exactly when to use oxygen on your patient. Here we go. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey everyone, it's the paramedic coach here. And if you're new here, be sure to tap that subscribe button down below. And everybody watching, go ahead and smash that like button down below. Thank you for the support here of my channel. Now, what we're talking about today is when do we actually give oxygen to our patient? I'm gonna be going through first, gonna be the key points. Then I'm gonna break down the different ways, devices, what they are, why we use them for oxygen delivery. And then finally, I'm gonna give you scenarios based on those devices. Stay tuned to the end, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this. Now the main thing that you need to know, my friends, is we do not just give somebody oxygen because they're having a hard time breathing. Just because they're short of breath, we don't just give them oxygen, okay? We give oxygen based on this rule, and here it is. What is the oxygen saturation of the patient, okay? So what that means, if the patient's oxygen saturation, let's say is 99%, they don't need more oxygen, they have enough. So we can help them in other ways maybe, but we don't, they don't need oxygen at this time, okay? Now, I'm gonna go through all the devices and why we would use them, okay, but that's a good rule to start with. Now, you can see here I have uh, cardiac, respiratory emergencies, shock, stuff like that. These are some of the most common times where the patient's oxygen saturation would be lower and we might wanna give oxygen. Are there others? Sure, there are others, but these are some of the main types of calls. Think about it, asthma, anaphylaxis, uh, could be a COPD patient, right, CHF, MI, right? Those are times we need to give oxygen. Shock, obviously, okay? Now right here, we have the main oxygen delivery devices in the ambulance. Depending on the patient situation, it's gonna determine what we actually use. But I wanna break down first what they are. So nasal cannula. So a nasal cannula would be used in a patient, it's very simply, you're gonna loop it around their ears, it goes in their nose. A nasal cannula in EMS is mostly used for a patient, maybe their oxygen saturation is just a little too low, but they're awake, but they're having mild, sometimes maybe moderate symptoms, okay? That's where we're gonna try a nasal cannula to get them back above our 94%. Remember, the normal oxygen saturation is 94 to 99%. We wanna keep them there. Now next we have the non-rebreather mask. So a non-rebreather mask, I want you to think of a, a little bit of a worsening patient. Maybe the patient is able to maintain their own airway. They're not having a ventilation problem, but their O2 sat is a little lower. The non-rebreather, we're gonna use that for oxygen delivery. Let's say in a patient, maybe they're tripoding speaking in one or two word sentences. Their O2 sat is maybe a lot less than 93%, it's a little more lower. That's where we're gonna bring out our non breather mask with high flow O2 to get them back above 94% oxygen saturation. Now the next thing here you see is a BVM. Remember, we use a BVM, a bag valve mask, it's a ventilation tool. So we're not just gonna give someone a BVM ventilation for oxygen delivery. It's for ventilation, but we do hook it up to high flow too, so I want to mention it. But remember, ventilation tool. Now we have CPAP over here, and then we have a nebulizer or an inhaler. Now, an inhaler is something that you will find, you know, a patient might have, you know, in their purse, it might be in their home, in their car, right? Uh, an asthma patient or a COPD patient might carry an inhaler, so you'll see that. Now let's talk about the nebulizer. That nebulizer in the ambulance, there's two types. One is handheld, the patient can actually hold themselves. The other one is a mask. It's kind of similar to an hour breather mask, but it has a place you can actually put the medications in to deliver albuterol or duoneb, ipotropium, live albuterol to that patient, okay? So that's our nebulizer. And then finally, we have CPAP. So CPAP could be used in asthma, could be used in COPD, but don't forget this, CHF is gonna be used for CPAP as well. People always forget that, so I wanna bring that up. Asthma, anaphylaxis, CHF, very common uses. Now, 
what uh, levels of oxygen delivery do we do for these? So nasal cannula, remember, is going to be one to six liters per minute, okay? So we're trying to get them above an A4%. Maybe we start at two, doesn't work, try four, try six. That doesn't work, we gotta move up. BVM, you're 15 liters, okay? And then we look at the, um, the nebulizer as the other thing that we would go hook the oxygen in. Depending on where you are, both are fine. Could be six liters per minute, also could be eight liters per minute. Now here we go with our scenarios. Let's start with the first scenario. We have five scenarios, and I've also included a bonus mnemonic so stay to the end, I'm gonna share it with you. Now the first thing, we have a 76 year old female speaking in one to two word sentences. She's tripoding and also has an O2 set of 88%. Now, remember what I told you earlier, tripoding, low O2 sat, and we have one to two word sentences. That's gonna be your non rebreather okay? So number one is non rebreather write, write these in the comments down below as we go along. That way it gets in your brain even better so you remember it, okay? Now number two, a patient who is wheezing with a respiratory rate of 22, O2 sat 91% in a 34 year old female. As soon as you hear wheezing, what are we gonna think about? AAC, I'm gonna go over to my mnemonic. Anyone who's wheezing, think AAC, asthma, anaphylaxis, COPD, okay? Those are your patients that wheeze, AAC. So what do they need? They need a NEB. That's gonna be your dual NEB, your albuterol, the albuterol, there it is. Okay, number three. A 45 year old male with shortness of breath, speaks in full sentence, normal respiratory rate of 18, we know 12 to 20 is normal, but the O2 sat's a little low at 92, we need to get him above 94. Nasal cannula, okay, titrate up. Now number four, unresponsive patient, 66 years old, respiratory rate of eight, O2 sat of 84%. Now what is that gonna be? Is it an oxygen problem or a ventilation problem? It's actually both of the problems, but if they need to be ventilated, they can't protect their own airway, this is gonna be your BVM. Finally, JVD, high blood pressure, bilateral rails with an O2 sat of 86%. I know I'm doing it, I'm hammering home here. Don't forget CPAP for CEHF. Could it be used for asthma? Could it be used for COPD? Of course. But don't forget CHF, my friends. Just what I've seen from my experience, people always forget about that. My goal with this video today was simple, to finally clear up for you understanding when to give oxygen and how all the devices that give oxygen actually work. Hope I accomplished that goal. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions. Now finally, if you're one of these three people, if you're getting ready for school, if you're in school right now and you're struggling to understand, or you are getting ready to prep for National Registry, it's coming up soon, I want you to go down below, click learn more in the description, prepareforems.com is the link down there. That is a link to my prep course. You get access to over 180 videos, me as your coach, and our community group that is in the thousand strong in our community to ask questions as well. So my friends, hit the link down there. I'm gonna give you a lifetime access right now when you click that link, and I will see you on the next video. Thanks for being here. Kept, oh, like everything that you were saying was just connecting all these all these you know links inside my brain and i i just knew right then and there um i have to have this program i have to have all the information that he's willing to give i need all of it i went through it i i spent the time and money in other areas and i'm, I'm just gonna let you guys know that uh this was everything i was searching for the whole time the first couple of videos i watched um what i noticed it, it just i i just immediately started connecting dots um, on some of these things I, I didn't have grasped. Went on there that I continued reviewing and I did it for about a month and you know, it, it helped a lot. Like I said, even after school and I took that test one time and I passed it. Your particular program, you have your students engaging and you have your students discussing and you have your students actually using your products. And I'm seeing time and time again, um, students that are coming in and announcing their new certification with National Registry. Olds obviously passing the exam, doing it pretty quickly, 70 questions in about an hour. Um, well, you definitely are like how your videos are. Like I wasn't sure how it was gonna be, but you are how you, your videos are. 
So that was awesome. So people who are getting ready for paramedic school, or if you're getting ready to go in the Navy as a corpsman or as an army medic, um, you want to prepare yourself. Evan, I know you've got a program that helps people prepare that way. So bottom line is guys, you don't ever want to hear something for the first time with a bunch of other students. So if you're in a competitive learning environment, you don't want to hear about AFib for the first time where everybody else, you want to have an understanding of it before you walk in the room. From 120 questions, passing two sections, um, near passing one, and then I think two below passing to seven questions passing completely. $7,000 for school plus everything else that you put into it all the time and all the time off work and family and everything. It's to see people fail and fail and fail and then just quit, which I know a couple of people who have, I tend to say, you know, it doesn't hurt to have somebody right there to talk to, you know, send a question. Anytime I get the chance, I'll, I'll gladly offer or advise them to sign up for you and your paramedic coach. It's, it's truly helpful and amazing at what you do. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that.